Hi, David Vizard here, and you guys are watching Paratech 10. In this edition of Paratech 10, that will be edition 147, we're going to do a little survey, or that's my intent. The thing that I'm uh, looking into at the moment is variety of subjects. Now, what I want you to do is to see where we might be falling short on subject material. Now, by the same token, I need you to consider that if you've got um, a Bugatti Byron and you want to see an engine rebuild, it isn't going to happen because you'll be one of maybe a hundred customers at the most. What I would like is your opinions on what we can do for the mass or the masses. Uh, that gives us the biggest scope. Also, I would like to see if we've got a good balance between high tech and functionality that you can apply. Now, I don't mean across a number of articles, I mean in one particular article. Are the ones that are high tech not giving you enough of the basics? Or are the basic ones not giving you enough of the technical side of it? Or are we hitting the mark somewhere handy? It's important for me to know that because I can swing it either way. Now, what's the next on the agenda here? Um, yes. Uh, here's what I don't think we're doing enough of. Number one, racing. We've got this Mustang and we've got Andy's car and the truck. And we end up spending what I think is too much time on doing the project and not enough time racing it. So racing is what we're doing it all for. So spending only a few percent of our time actually racing or targeting racing, I don't think it's a good thing. For instance, I'm halfway through doing Andy's cylinder heads for his um, uh, Crown Vic, right? Now that is going to add 70, 80 horsepower to that car. It's geared just right for that kind of mod and the engine's in exceptionally good condition, burns no oil, just runs like it's brand new with 150,000 miles on it. That goes to show what happens when you take care of oil changes on your engine. Modern oils are exceptionally good. Let me tell you a story. If we'd had modern oils back in World War II, we would have probably had the availability at any one time of twice the number of engines. How does that work out? Well, I'll tell you. Back when uh, an engine for a DC-3, that's an 1830 Pratt and Whitney, 1200 horsepower, 14-cylinder uh, radial. Great engine, right? Reliable, runs well. And uh, Now, at a thousand hours, Back in 1945-44 wartime, at a thousand hours, they were well and truly worn. The bores were worn, they smoked, they were down on horsepower, etc., etc., you name it. And they required a rebuild. Now, you don't rebuild one of those in an afternoon. 14 cylinder, it's a big engine. It weighs a ton. And that engine is going to be out of circulation for at least a week. And it's going to take two guys working on it to get it done. There's a lot of parts in that engine. Now, I had, many years ago, I had a friend that was um, uh, a reciprocating engine rebuilder, and he specialized in radial engines. And he was telling me, I say, how long ago was this? This is probably 20 years ago. So it applies even more now. That with modern oils in an R1830, Five thousand hours and they have to tear them down not because they're worn out but because they have to be torn down legally that's the maximum number of hours you can put in on a piston engine 
I don't know if the rules have changed, but that's how it was then. So modern oils are worth it. You can see now why I watch so many of Lake Speed's videos. So many of them are useful tips on oils. Now let's get back on the subject here. Do we look at uh, things like cheap and simple mods enough? Do we look at things like simple porting techniques? And I've got one for uh, engine builders. If you've got a machine like a Surdy or a, uh, anything that does a piloted um, a deal, I have got a technique for absolutely pocket porting heads super fast and getting results from it, right? It's almost all machine work. You should be able to do a set of heads, pocket port them in a beautiful condition and cut the seats in about two to three hours at the most and that's going through with a coffee break so look for that coming out in the video now you guys who want to have your heads pocket ported or you just want the machining done that's a cheap way to get your seats cut and the bowls done you don't have much work to do all you've got to do is blend the bowls now into the rest of the port and even if you don't touch the rest of the port you'll get 75 percent of the increase you would have done had you done the rest of the ports in a, in a regular uh, porting job so watch out for that that's coming along do you want more videos like that now uh let's get back to um uh what else i was going to ask here yes please put in your comments what you think we should be doing oh uh, let's talk about intake manifolds, right? Interesting thing. Uh, and I just thought of this when I thought of intake manifolds. I had a telephone call from Eric Weingartner the other day, and I've got to say, it was one of the most polite, uh, how shall I say, it's difficult for me to describe it, but he was a total gentleman. I, I, there's no other way to describe it and Eric I want to thank you for that that when I told you your call made my day I really meant it did but that's not that's an aside there here's what I was looking at the other day I don't know a week ago he posted a video on a dominator on a two-plane big block manifold now the and the results were good it was up in power and torque everywhere um, and that was the same um, uh, uh, CFM of Dominator as 4150. Both of them were about 1050 CFM. Now, many, many, many years ago, I was in, I did a lot of big block work back when. I did some flow testing on big block intake manifolds. And the one thing I found out, and it, Eric conferred, confirm this with his test one thing i found out was that the edelbrock big block two plane manifold flowed very well until you put a carburetor on it the intake manifold on a big block deserves a bigger carburetor now i called up uh, dr rick at edelbrock that's when they were in california and said and told him about this and said you need to make a dominator intake on a two plane it will make a 500 inch big block really wake up I, I, and I said I'm guessing 40 to 50 horsepower up on the 4150 you can't just ignore 40 or 50 horsepower oh and probably the torque as well so he said really i said yeah i just did some flow testing and i screwed around with the manifold managed to ruin it in the process but it turns out that the manifold will accept will show a benefit with a carburetor up to 1500 cfm eric want to see if we could do something between us on that that might be a good way for us to work together instead of fight together right i think you might like this just uh, i'll give you a call shortly right and we'll see anyway there's a deficiency there that can be looked into 
Now there is a problem with using a single uh, uh, dominator is that they don't exactly shine for street drivability. Now when I say they don't exactly shine, we can get the 4150 to work like it's fuel injection for drivability, but the dominator takes a little more work to make it streetable. However, I think employing the uh, uh, skills of a company such as AED that specializes in carburetors might just pay off. And I tell you what, Holly, making a vacuum secondary dominator would be great. Just think about it. Now, I don't think that I've got much more to say at this point, but uh, think about those things there. Think about what you'd like to see and let's see if I can get to it. Um, but I especially want your thoughts on we need to do more racing. I need you to back me up when I talk to Andy about this. Thank you for watching.